Welcome to Holistically Speaking. I am Morella DeVoe, your host. Our mission with Holistically Speaking is to be the avenue through which the voices of holistic health reach you at the time you need it most. And today we're talking about humor, the healing power of humor. And my guest is Colin Ryan. Hi. I'm so happy that you agreed to join me. Me as well. I'm through. I'm really excited about your Are show. Are you? <laughs> I am. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, I was excited about having you on the show, mm -hmm. and then when I started looking at your website and your blog, I got even more excited. So oh. I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Oh, me too. I'm glad to hear it. I I love the whole idea of talking about healing and talking about how people can overcome things, can grow, can sort of face new areas of their life, and. I do that in a unique way, admittedly. Yes, and so I am curious, first and foremost, about what do you call yourself? How do you describe what you do? Oh, sure. Uh, I am a speaker and a stand-up comedian, and I help people change their relationship to money and to fear. And so I really bring the comedian aspect into areas that I think we tend to not even talk mm -hmm. about it at all. Right. You know, money is very much a silencing, shaming kind of a subject, but but fear even more so. Right. It, it really, it's like, it's this universal feeling that none of us talk about. Right. What if I tried that and I failed or was rejected or humiliated? And, and we feel that in lots of moments in our day, but, but to be able to go there through humor right. and through honesty, really, is, is a real um, a pleasure. Yeah, well, and you, that is a really good point that I think socially we just are, yeah. we suppress our fear. You know, you don't yeah. talk about it, uh, just like stuff it in the closet, well, right? Well, yeah, I think, I think that there's this big myth, and it's taken me a long time, Morella, to, mm -hmm. to, to figure this out. And I now believe this wholeheartedly. And the myth is this, the myth is that being vulnerable is weak. Yeah, admitting a weakness is some form of weakness and fear right. and cowardice and inadequacy, and I actually think the opposite is true. I think that if you're able to be honestly and authentically who you are, people will relate to you, yeah. people will feel good around you, people will root for your success because you're real. Right, because and they I, can connect with you now. Yeah, well, yeah, and I think that so much of my life, I thought that in order to connect and impress people, I had to be perfect, I had to be brilliant, I had to be all of these, right, up to these benchmarks that no one can ever attain to. Right. Well, and, and I guess <clears throat> what you've discovered for yourself is um, what Brene Brown talks yeah. about so well, right? Yeah. That um, vulnerability is the key to connection, right? It's the key. And I, I, her work has totally changed my life. And yeah. I think on some level, from a very young age, I was kind of like a little mini, mini Brene Brown. And even as a, even as a, as a male, I found that was unique about myself that I always wanted to talk about, here's what I'm feeling, here's what I'm experiencing in this moment. I didn't feel a lot of hesitation to do so. Yeah, but I also felt like, is this what it means to be a man? Yeah, because that's unusual. Well, and that's what I found, and I've, I've asked my mom about this, because I, <laughs> I grew up with my mom and my two sisters primarily, so I was definitely in a household of women. But my mom said to me, she said, no, you were always that way. Mm. You just were always very sort of conversational and transparent, which is kind of a funny thought, you know, like little right. six-year-old kid, like, oh, I just feel so insufficient today. Right. You know, like that's, that's an <laughs> odd way to think. And I think that part of it is that I, I grew up pretty fast. You know, my parents right. split up when I was three. And by oh, the time me I, too. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so there's, there's an experience there that, you know, I think when we were younger, we probably felt regret over or a sense of why did this happen to me and yeah. I didn't deserve this and, and as an adult I've come to realize no this has made me who I am exactly this has taught me how to care and relate to people who have gone through things like that so how did you become a stand-up comedian or what led you there yeah, you know it, from well part of it is from a very young age I sensed that humor was a way to sort of impress people and to show yeah. value, which which now I know is a very unhealthy thing. Um, I would meet somebody and I would think, how do I make them laugh? Because that's how I know that they like me. Interesting. And that's yeah. a lot to mm -hmm. put on yourself. Yeah. The funny thing, though, is that what I've discovered is that most comedic-minded people had this kind of experience growing up. Yeah. They're very fractured. They're very outsider and isolated. And what happens yeah. is they use humor to connect. 
And what they're actually doing is they're just practicing. Interesting. Every time they meet a stranger, they're like, how do I turn this into a punchline so that they'll like me? So <laughs> fast forward to adulthood and you have a skill. Right. And it comes from sometimes a very unhealthy place, but you are also funny mm -hmm. in a very polished way. And one thing, as you were just saying this, you yeah. say most comedians use humor to connect, but and the there was the sentence just that ran through my mind about how many comedians and humorists used yeah. humor to deflect, to like sure. deflect. So trying to connect, trying yeah. to get you to like me, but you're not going to get to know me because I'm just. You're absolutely like right. And I, and I would say my experience of funny people, especially professionally funny people, which is a strange way to describe your friend group, but it's true. Yeah. I'm friends with people who are paid money to be funny. They're that yeah. funny. And people who I admire and I'm inspired by, but in terms of their whole picture of themselves and, and what they're willing to be honest about and what they struggle with, I do not believe that humor can save you right. from an inability to be honest about that stuff. Right. So I see these people and I admire them and I, and I, want, um, I, I want to share what I feel like has happened to me, mm -hmm. which is when I started doing comedy, what I did is I did my, what I thought the world defined a comedian as. Mm -hmm which meant I cursed quite a bit, right. which meant I was very sarcastic and sort of edgy and mm -hmm. kind of like apathetic. I don't care yeah. about anything. I'm a, sort of above it all. And what I found was that while that did make people laugh, it, didn't, it wasn't me at all. Right. I'm not that person. I'm actually, I care quite a great deal. Right. And so what happens is you gradually let go of this version that you're supposed to be and you start being you. Mm -hmm. And you start telling that story of that embarrassing moment. You know, the one you swore you would never tell anyone mm -hmm. and now you're telling it to 150 people and they're laughing and right. they're with you. And maybe you can feel that magic of that vulnerability and you go, oh, maybe I had it wrong. Maybe you just be yourself. Right. And that's where the real power is. Absolutely. So that's, for me, in a, in a weird way, Morella, humor allowed me to discover that. Mm -hmm. In the process of just trying to make people laugh and write jokes, I finally realized if something embarrassing happens to you, right. that that's a great moment to connect through instead yeah. of something to hide. So it's bringing the vulnerability and the realness of you yeah. into the comedy. Yeah, and I think that, you know, we all have a very good sort of authenticity detector. Right. You know, the lie detector. And, and I think that I think that we know when something feels real. Right. And I think that that's more fun, honestly, to hear somebody tell you a story and you go like, wow, this is yeah. how brave to, to go there. So brave. Mm. And you mentioned fear, how you're yeah. using comedy your stand-up comedy yeah. to help people with money and with fear. Yeah. So how did you like bring all of these together? How did you know, it, it was a long process. Um, I started doing comedy about five years ago. I took a comedy class. I had no grand plan. I just, I'd grown up worshiping Bill Cosby, mm -hmm. Seinfeld. It's such an elegant humor. Yeah, Bill Cosby. Yeah. yeah. Bill Cosby to me was always this template for life mm -hmm. that kind of really I mean, his show, yeah, but more his stand-up because he would just tell stories and yeah. everyone could relate and everyone could laugh. And I always thought, what a magical sort of life right. to go around and just tell stories that make people feel good. Yeah. And um, so, I, so I, I pursued comedy from that perspective. Those are the people that I admired. Um, but what happened to me was I did pretty well in the local scene. And, and what I mean by that only is... I, I reached the level where you are frequently asked to perform in shows or you're yeah. producing your own show. I produce mm -hmm. a comedy uh, charity series up in uh, Burlington and in St. Albans that has been amazing. It's been a yeah. really, we've raised a ton of money for charity. It's been this like wonderful experience. So I, I have that sort of business experience of comedy yeah. where I'm, I get to perform a lot and I like it. But there were these moments when people would come up after a show and say, um, you know, thank you, you were really funny. You know, I had a great time. And I remember thinking to myself, that should feel more meaningful than it does. Mm. And I love, I mean, I love that, I, here's what I love. I loved when people said I had a great time. Yeah. But when they said, you're funny, I just thought, I can't actually do anything with that. 
Right. Because that only serves me. Yeah. So, so what became clear to me was, could I use comedy as a doorway into real truth? To talk mm -hmm. about real things. Yeah. And, and it just so happens that what I believe life is all about is building skills. Mm -hmm. It's about identifying where are you weak and working on it until you become strong. Yeah. You know, much like, uh, and I don't want to assume for you, but I know growing up with this weird family, this sort of pain and this yeah. isolation, I felt like that was a real weakness about me. Mm. But by learning from it and building skills around it, I discovered it's actually part of me that makes me really care and yeah. compassionate and understanding and yeah. sort of taught me a lot about life. Right. Did you feel similarly? I did. You know, it's as with anybody who has any sort of childhood pain, I think when yeah. you're willing to look at it, not no longer wanting to have it be any different, right. but rather say, oh, actually this has shaped me into the person that I am. Yeah. And you kind of reconcile yourself with that pain and, and mm. you realize how it's made you even stronger or, you know, yeah. has given you skills or some sort of resiliency or, you know, an ability to connect or whatever it might be. Right. But Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. And I, ultimately it drove me into therapy, mm -hmm. which was the best thing that ever happened in my life. As a I, practitioner or No, 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 to, just to go. Yeah. Just okay. to make, sort of like, to make that call. Yeah. To dial a number and say, hi, I need. I'm not doing okay, can I right. talk to you? Right. And what I discovered is, because I was raised Irish Catholic mm -hmm. for the most part, and so I kind of had this perspective, I mean, a very Irish perspective on sharing. <laughs> secrets, which is um, don't. Don't. Right? Yeah, you, you don't. <laughs> um, hold them in mm -hmm. um, it, until you die. Right. And then you win because you never had to tell your secrets, you know, which is so exactly. unhealthy because maybe that's what killed you is right. that you didn't talk about it. So for me to, to call someone and say, I need, I need to talk to somebody through some of these things, it felt like I was saying, I'm crazy. I'm a right. crazy person. What I discovered is that it was the healthiest thing you could ever do and I'm actually very outspoken about this like these are people who are trained to help you make mental connections it's yeah. not like this weird out there thing a lot of times it's just saying well that pain sounds like something you experienced when you were a little kid so how do we deal yeah. with that mm -hmm. so that you don't continually feel angry right. or look down on or whatever yeah so for me you know there was this beautiful combination of humor and comedy and honesty and then seeing how people with skills were helping me grow mm -hmm. and saying, how can I fuse those together? So I started speaking in schools uh, around the topic of personal finance. And it was, in some ways, just a creative exercise. How do I make a boring subject entertaining? entertaining a and very funny. boring subject, right? Yeah. I use the word budgeting frequently. <laughs> and that will stop a conversation. It's like there right? is, is very little that sounds less fun oh, than budgeting. Oh, it sounds budgeting. awful. And <laughs> yeah. the funny thing is, when you really get into it, what you discover is that budgeting is so much more than cutting back. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a tool that allows you to save up money for what you really want. Yeah. So you go, okay, I got to stop eating gummy bears because I'm spending X amount of dollars on this, and every dollar I'm spending on that, I could be saving for my go to Paris fund. Right. Or my go on a safari, you know? So, you started ta speaking to kids in schools yeah. and using humor already, yeah. and you're still doing this, right? Yeah. You're still going to schools. Mm -hmm. So, how do you see your humor helping you, like, how does it work with the kids and the budgeting and like, I... Yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, what I have come to really love is the art of speaking, mm -hmm. the art of presenting, and it is an art. And yeah. I think that anyone who's ever watched a bad speaker or yeah. a great speaker would, would attest to this, you know? And, and I just watched, I watched a TED Talk just the other day where this guy had a great point and he was so nervous Oh. And so, like, in his own head, that by the time his speech was done, that's what I remember. Oh, Not his point. I remember his pain and his, his discomfort. Right. And so what I've learned is that you have to become a great speaker just so that your message can be memorable right. and, and can, right. can move people. So, you know, for me, it was always this idea of, like, if I'm going to talk to somebody about any topic at all, right. first I have to win you over. I have to win your trust. 
I have to get you to like me. Mm -hmm. I have to get yourself to maybe see yourself in my shoes and vice versa. Because if so, then we can talk about right. almost any topic. Right. And so right away with young people, and actually not just young people, with any group I talk to, I would ask about what's your dream? What's your like, big, wild ambition for your life? Because I think that when it comes to money, what most people have become very good at is planting seeds of doubt in your head yeah. about your dream and kind of stepping on your dream, usually with good intention, right. but still totally like crushing your drive yeah. a little bit. And what I've found is, again, if you can budget your money, you can pursue your dream as long as you want. It's, it's kind of actually very enabling. Right. So for me, they're very connected. You talk about your dream, you talk about money, and it's not just money, you also talk about courage. You talk about yeah. how do you block yourself from pursuing that dream. The funny thing that's happening, the funny thing that's happening to me as I'm speaking with you, and I'm yeah. sure it's happening to all of our viewers as they're listening to you, is, is that we all want to sit in one of your lectures. Oh, and what, oh lectures nice. or one of your yeah. your shows yeah. or whatever because I I would love to experience what mm. it's like to hear someone talking about dreams or budgeting or money or yeah. courage yeah. in a humorous way. In a humorous I'm, way. Like, I'm dying. <laughs> to well, find and out. I you know and I and I got lucky mm -hmm. because a month before I got this position where I was sort of doing these finance workshops um, for a company, I had started doing comedy. So I didn't know it at the time, but I was beginning to fuse two mm -hmm. very wonderful and very different things together. Right. And when I started, I considered it kind of the, um, for lack of a better term, like the Bruce Wayne and Batman right. kind of Yeah, split. they're not, right. Yeah, I do comedy and I don't talk about that because I don't want students in a school to say, tell us some jokes because I'm talking about credit reports. like It's hard to make that funny. What happened over time is I just discovered that the more I could just be one person and bring humor into my content, it's almost like the energy just shifts to where people feel really relaxed right. and they feel loose and empowered. And, and that's where you want to be if you're yeah. talking about skills. And I, I think that the confirmation of what I do will always be this one moment, and I do this a lot, so I'm in an assembly, we've talked about our dreams, I've told my story, we've talked about you know, money or kindness is another mm -hmm. area, I talk a lot about the power of just being kind. Right. And then I go to my heart of my message, which is courage. And I, t and I, I we share our phobias. I say, what, what scares you? What, what's like an animal that yeah. freaks you out, you know, that you wanna announce in front of a room full of people, yeah. you know? Yeah. And we have fun and people say spiders and sometimes people say styrofoam and you go, what? You know, yeah. all kinds of different phobias. Um, one time a woman said, my fear is everyone looking at me. Because I, I pointed her out, and, and she said that, and I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm just creating your fear for you. I'm, I'm going to focus over here now. Right. You know? And, and we, we talk about these silly fears, and I have a great silly fear, which is that I am afraid of sharks in a swimming pool. Always. I get into a swimming pool, I picture sharks attacking me, which makes me a very fast swimmer, you know? <laughs> Powered by sort power. of terror, you know? But... But I, I sh we share these things because we all have them. And then what happens is I ask the students or the adults to go a level deeper. What is something that scares you like between people in your yeah. daily life? Something real. Mm -hmm. And these students, right? High school is a time when you're being very cautious. Yeah, about very what guarded. You yeah. yeah. And they yell out things like failure mm -hmm. and rejection, never amounting to anything. Wow. being alone and all I can say to every one of these answers is thank you for yeah. having the courage to make this moment real real right and so that for me is the confirmation of what I do because I don't think without humor without the ability to pull us out of that or take us down into yeah. it I don't think that would happen that way that has to be a profoundly transformational moment for every time, every time. for the kids. And I, hope, and I hope it is for them, and I believe that it is, because students have said to me, you know, I felt like you were talking right to me about my dream, and yeah. now I'm going to do it. My favorite example of this is a, a student I met down in central Vermont who wanted to be a rapper, mm -hmm. okay? 
This is a white kid in a white town in the middle of Vermont. He's like 15 years old. He's, I want to be a rapper. And I said, you do that. Mm -hmm. And he said, the reason what's holding me back is I'm afraid to rap because people might judge me. And I said, who is somebody you can talk to in your school, like a talent show or some kind of student group where you could get up and try this? Yeah. And he said, you know what, I'm going to do it. And he and I actually continue to Facebook. Every like couple months, I check in on him or he'll send me, tell me what he's doing. He has produced a, a CD. Wow. He's performed at talent shows. Like half the school is like rooting for him to be successful. Yeah. And, and I credit that more to him than to me. I think my message hit him at the right moment. Exactly. But then he went and changed his story. Yeah. And did something really brave. Yeah. But that's the sort of thing that when it happens, you feel like, oh, yes, this is why I'm doing this. Yeah. You know? Yes. Well, and that's a very important point. Yeah. Is that there's no other motivation for me that, that, that actually works. Right. I've tried like, oh, I want to make a lot of money, or I want to be really impressive, and I want people to think I'm really great and smart, and, and those things make me miserable. Mm -hmm. But when I think about the people who have gone off and changed their story because of something I said, I just feel, like, honored. Yeah. You know, and I just know that I want to do that yeah. as much as I can. So I have, like, a million yeah. questions popping up in my mind <laughs> that I want to ask you. And, um, you do a variety of workshops, yeah. particularly with kids, right? Mm -hmm. Or what, I know a variety of settings, but especially with kids. Yeah, right? my focus is middle school, high school, college. Mm -hmm. um, I do also work with adults, and I have also worked with elementary school, which is yeah. a lot of fun. Um, I just seem to be able to kind of cover yeah. that spread, whoever my audience is. Um, but yeah. And that's you my have primary. like four core subject areas. Can you tell us what those four? Yeah, so it all comes out of this idea of courage, mm -hmm. which I would just describe as identifying one thing that scares you. Anything. Could be small, could be going to a comedy class, could be really big, like traveling to another continent, or interviewing for a job you don't think you could get. Yeah. And then you got to put in the work, right? You put in the work right. and you will build courage. Where I see this also applies in the world of money. Mm -hmm. I think that it takes courage to not buy the latest phone. It takes courage to not try to blend in and waste money on things that aren't going to make you happy. Right. It takes courage to give your money away. So money is an area. I talk about kindness because I think that for young people, this issue of bullying is very difficult and also an issue that we struggle with in all parts of our life. Right. And, you know, corporate bullying is also a huge problem. Yeah. And somehow, because you're an adult, you think you're not supposed to be affected by it. Yeah. And <clears throat> for me, I think that the, the secret to that is not stopping people from being unkind, because I don't think right. you can do that. It's building yourself up to the point that you love yourself regardless. Right. And if you can do that, I mean, I've had this happen. People will always be very negative and cutting, mm -hmm. and you can go... Well, that's about you. Yeah, exactly. Because I like me. And that's a good skill. Yeah. That and is an en enormously powerful <clears throat> skill. Yeah, and it takes work, but it can we be built. We all need to, yeah. to have that. Well, me too. I mean, <laughs> I learned that in um, comedy clubs <laughs> where people, if they don't like your joke, I mean, A, they won't laugh, which is painful. Right. But B, they might yell at you. Yeah. This sucks. Talk about developing thick people skin. Will, yeah, people will yell next. Yeah, you oh know, my God. You would, <laughs> you would never be in the Philharmonic and be performing and have and somebody be like, boo, <laughs> <laughs> I hate this. There's something about comedy that's very kind of no holds barred that yeah. way. And I've come to love it because it makes you tough. Yeah. So I think I've covered money, the bullying resiliency, Leadership, Leadership, I think, is a lot of this, the ability to listen mm -hmm. and to really um, inspire people comes from knowing who you are. Yeah. And um, I just find with these areas that there is so much potential. Yeah. You know, and I, and I think that m most specifically, I like to talk about mental health because I think that we all have uh, struggles that we maybe feel like we can't talk about. Yeah. And that's where I feel really honored as a comedian to kind of go there. Yeah, exactly. So. And it's ultimately so taboo to talk about, you know, yeah. anything mental. 
So before yeah. we run out of time, I want to be sure that our viewers can see how they can read your blog, yeah. get your free book, mm -hmm. maybe look at your uh, talks and workshops that you do. So if we can show that page to our viewers. So your website is ColinRyanSpeaks.com and mm -hmm. on that website it's all the information about the different workshops that you do and how people could even book you to right. have you yeah, come as a speaker sure. for at a school or a company event. Or, exactly. And uh, you have a free book <laughs> that you put in quotations. I put it in quotations because <laughs> it's eight pages, so I feel like it's it's an adorable book yeah. more than it's an actual <laughs> a book. A cute eight-page book, <laughs> Advice from a Comedian. Yeah. That I actually uh, downloaded. I mean, oh, I cool. ordered it, so I'm and it's, forward and to it's reading funny, it. And it's funny, you know, and it's yeah. it's got so much heart, and I just feel like it's a great starting point if yeah. you're kind of thinking about what you want to do with your life or do next. Cool. So so you can download that at uh, Colin's website, colinryanspeaks.com, mm -hmm. and then Colin's blog is uh, standuplife.com, and I just read a couple of the blog posts, and I really admired the uh, brevity. <laughs> They're so easy to read. <laughs> as a blogger, as a blogger myself, <clears throat> I struggle so much yeah. with keeping blog posts short, and they're really punchy. Yeah. You you can you are really good at transmitting a powerful idea succinctly. So well, thank you. I thought that was really really credit, great. I have to say, credit goes a lot to my fiance Lindsay. She's the other half of a stand-up life. Yeah. And she took me from the eight thousand words about one idea. About every idea, About every down to, the to these little bite-sized <laughs> blogs, and it's more fun and it's more digestible. So very powerful, and yeah. I just read a handful of them, and really, really rich. Oh, stuff that's so there, cool! So. Thank you so much. So we have only about a couple minutes. Yeah. And <coughs> what I would love to wrap up with is, um, well, two things. Um, I asked you before our interview if you were, if you ever had a fear of yeah. uh, comedy and mm. of stand-up comedy, and you said yes. I did. And so I'd love <coughs> it if you could wrap up for us in about a minute or so mm -hmm. how y all of us can use the power of comedy, of humor mm. in our own healing. Or yeah, well, there's two ways I would look at that. First off, looking at life for what's funny about it and what funny stories you can tell out of embarrassing things that happen to you or mistakes you make is so healthy mm -hmm. because it happens to all of us and when you tell those stories people will like you more they'll feel more at ease around you yeah. they'll relate to you yeah. so i just think that's a great sort of way to look at life but what i would say about comedy is that for me i didn't have a plan it just scared me mm -hmm. and when i went to this class I'll be honest with you, I felt like I was walking to my death. I don't know what it was about this, but staying in front of people, telling a joke, not having them laugh, felt like yeah. rejection on a like molecular level. Right. So I got into this room, and the teacher called my name, and I got up there, and I started telling jokes. And people started laughing. Yeah. And everything changed for me. And everything changed because, not because I was now going to become Jerry Seinfeld or because I had it all figured out, but what I did know was that if something scares you and you just go and face it, mm -hmm. what you will discover is so much better than what you assume will happen. Yeah. So even if you're not that good at it, you'll discover, oh, I'm tougher than I think. Right. Or maybe you'll discover you have the potential to be great at something brand new yeah. you might have never tried. Yeah. So that, for me, is the heart of it, is like, just identify one thing that scares you, see what happens. See what happens. That's a story. And, and you're <clears throat> making light of the pain, you know, just yeah. being willing to own it and share it and just, you know, like you said, making, telling a funny story out of the yeah. difficult things. Yeah. So. Well, it changes it, too. It changes it. It makes it more fun to think about than maybe it would have been otherwise. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for yeah, joining me. Yeah, this was wonderful. Thank you for joining us. Definitely check out uh, Colin's website, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs> but that was...